right, coming off that amazing victory against Laura, um, how's your confidence fighting international guys grown? Uh, for now, I could say uh, I feel strong because uh, in the gym, they give me that mo the motivation. Now, when I'm preparing for the fight, I've got, got that thing that now I'm preparing for a fight. I'm preparing for uh, in, uh, uh, international fights. Yeah, because uh, Coach Demon and Coach Andy, they give me that thing that now you have to focus. You're not fighting local fights, uh, South African fights. You're fighting, you're fighting international fights. You have to be like this, you have to be like this. That's what I put in my mind. Let's talk about uh, Jonas Sultan. Um, you know, he beat Makazole Tete, he beat Casimiro. Um, how real is this threat? Uh, Jonas Sultan is a threat. I think anyone at international level, especially when you're a top rated fighter and the WBC recognizes you know, as number 13 in their rankings, you, you are a threat. The, he's sitting number 10 or 11 on BoxRec. So he's, he's rated with the top boys in the division. It's a good test for Dumas Weni. He just came through another test against Lara. He did the job for the South Africans, so we are happy with that. Um, he now needs to do this for another South African. So he's been here before. I'm expecting Sultan to come confident because he's familiar with the environment. He knows what to expect. I think the biggest thing is obviously we know he can punch. Um, he's a solid opponent. He's been at world level before. He's fought for the IBF world title. He's fought some uh, quality opponents in his career. Do I feel he's a massive threat to Dumas Wenny? No. Do I feel like I'm stepping in there with the best fighter in the world? No. I feel he's, he's a good fighter. He's going to bring threats to the fight. He'll bring certain challenges, but I know Dumas Wenny's class will will overcome those those tests. Um, Dumas Wenny is in a, in, a, in a valuable time of his career where the he's ready for the world and it needs to happen now. So he needs to get through Sultan and then we see what's next. There's a nice belt at stake here. It will introduce him to the WBC within the top, uh, the top five. So there's multiple doors that will open for him and he gets through Sultan, he'll be rated in the top 10 in BoxRec. So he's amongst the biggest names in the, the division. Let's talk about that. Uh, obviously the WBC silver titles up for grabs. Um, how confident are you that you're ready to step up to this level now? Yeah, yeah I, I'm feeling okay. Yeah. My confidence is high. Yeah, because every time, yeah, the support I've got in my gym, it makes me feel like yeah, I'll go and do it. And I told my mind that uh, I'll do it and I'll make my gym to be proud of me all the time. You know, um, in a way, Jim is when he's been fast tracked here. Yeah? Would you agree with that? And then, um, yeah, what do you think about that? I don't know if he's been fast tracked. I think um, he had a little bit of a, a waiting period in his career um, after he lost for the SA title and his previous manager and trainer. Um, it's, he came back to the, I think he left there, he came to us, we, we, we broke everything down, we rebuilt and he went on to shine and I think um, the result against Lara proved the quality of Dumizweni and it just shows how far ahead of he, of, of how far ahead of the game he is compared to the rest of the South Africans in his division. Um, there's, there's three good fighters in his division, it's him, it's Butelezi and it's Akibo. The rest are just occupying the division so there's there's no real entertaining fights for us locally and what more can we ask for than for him to test his skills internationally is it a fast track no he just took care of a mexican now he's got a field opinion so let's 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 get the job done and then we look at something bigger after that he's he's got a family to provide for he wants to make a name for himself in professional boxing and the only way to do it is to fight the best in the world so we get through this task and the doors are open for one of the best in the world. You know, Sultan's a puncher, I'm sure you would know that. Um, how do you plan on negotiating his, his punching power? With our hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, uh, Sultan, I see some, some fight for Sultan, yeah. He's coming with the, with, the, with the right hand, the big right hand, 
but we have to destroy that thing to Sultan. He have to throw that right in the air all the time so that we can destroy the that that thing on him that he, he will stop the boxers and and so on and so on. Yeah. For me, Sultan's power is there. But uh, if you compare him to the rest of the boys in the world, I think he's very slow. Um, I don't think he's a fast puncher. He lacks work rate. There's those elements to me that um, Dumaswini will um, take away. So he'll, I think with Dumaswini's movement, he should be able to make uh, Sultan miss. I think the power punches just means he's going to throw slower, which he's worse off. You saw a guy like Lara, if he can get going, he starts to let his hands go and he comes with work rate and he's aggressive. I think Lara is more aggressive than Sultan. And I think, um, yes, yeah, Sultan may be a bigger puncher than Lara, but I think Lara's got the better work rate. So we saw Dumaswini just dismantle Lara in four rounds, which to me was also a shock because I expected us to stop him in eight rounds and we didn't four. So for me, we weren't even really getting going yet. We were just laying the foundation of the fight for ourselves and the fight ended. So will my question be, will Sultan be able to take Dumaswini's power as well? Dumaswini's got 11 fights and nine knockouts. So the man can punch himself. We're not going there to see who can hit harder. That's not the idea. And if you're doing that at international level, you're going to get hurt. So we're going there with the game plan. We're going to stick to our game plan. We're expecting 12 rounds from Sultan. We know he's got a good chin. But is he the class of Dumaswini? I don't think so. You know, Dumaswini is probably number two in South Africa in his weight division at the moment. Um, do you see him reaching Butelezi level or maybe beyond? Butelezi is in a... He's the IBO world champion. He's at a stage of his career where a loss would hurt him. And I think the, the end of the career is nearing in. Does it make sense, like I've said in the past, to put two top South Africans to fight each other at this time? No. Let's send the boys off internationally. Let them compete. If they can do it, yes, maybe a unification. But let's, let's let them compete at international level so that they know they've taken their career to the highest level as possible. If they can make it, great. If they can't make it, then they can't. But then we can put it together. Because you look at two fighters like we look at Junior Makawu and uh, Tabiso Mchunu who fought each other and you take the two of them and you go okay well they were both at the top of their careers and unfortunately in theory two South Africans being Makabu being here for so many years fighting each other for the number one position in the world I think ideal would have been that they both become world champions and then have made the fight then it would have been something epic however one's career went a little bit further and the other one's career went on a bit of a dormant. So Tabiso's career slowed down. He suffered a few losses thereafter. Where um, Makabu went on to fight for the WBC world title. Yes, he lost the world title, but he fought at the highest level um, that, a, that a professional fighter could fight at. So we went back. We've been rebuilding Makabu back to the stage. He's now number four in the WBC. Tabiso's also on a road trying to rebuild his career. He's ABU champion. He's South African champion. So things need to happen for him. So when these top South African fights happen, they can hurt guys' careers, which is not ideal. What you want to do is you want to drive them both as far as they can internationally. If it doesn't happen, then you can always make that South African mega fight, which people will always buy. Which is one of the reasons why at the time you never took a fight for Anthony Sickle was undefeated at the time. You never took that fight. So yes. That's one of the reasons. Well, we we didn't take. We were willing to take the fight. The Sickle camp didn't take the fight. They are two homeboys. It's not nice to see they train together. They are like they're pretty much yeah. more than friends. I'd say they're more family. I mean, yeah. when you when you sit together, you train in the same gym. You grow up as youngsters together. You watch each other grow. To have that fight, it, yes, there's a lot more emotions involved, but. We look at Siko's careers and you look at Dumaswini's careers, they're two very far apart. So that fight didn't make sense. It made sense for us because we were fighting for, we would have fought for the SA title or have defended it. It's, 
at that time it would have made sense for us because we would have had to take care of a South African opponent. Um, Dumaswini had already taken care of Ngebiani over six rounds in the past before he had uh, joined my establishment. So Ngebiani doesn't make sense. So there's three fighters in this country in that division currently that, that hold positions and it's Sakibo, it's Dumaswini and it's Butelezi. Let's let all of them win world titles and then do a little mini world boxing super series in East London. <laughs> yeah. um, fighting in PE, I mean, sorry, you're not fighting in PE. You're fighting back at home in East London at the Orient Theatre. Yes. How happy are you about uh, fighting at the Orient Theatre again? Nah, I'm, uh, I'm too much happy to fight there because all my friends are there. Here in Gauteng, I didn't fight even once in professional. I come here in a match, but no people recognize me here in Gauteng. But I, I, I wish one day I can fight here. Because uh, I'm working here, every, every people, they know me now, here in Gauteng. Yeah, but uh, I'm happy to fight in this London so that even my family can come and watch me. Because it's a good fight, this one. I need everyone who wants to see the good boxing to come in, in the fight. As you said, yeah. fighting outside of East London, where's your dream venue? Where do you want to fight, maybe like overseas one day? Where's your, the venue that you want to be fighting at one day? Outside of South Africa. Outside the South Africa, if I, if I can fight here, uh, MG, M, ground, yeah. yeah, ground, yeah. Uh, if I can fight there, I would tell myself, yeah, I do something, yeah. I uh, think these are my wishes to go there. I think every boxer wants to fight in Las Vegas. I think that's when you when you fought in Vegas, you've now fought in the mega of boxing in the world, and I think also the UK is starting to create that grounds as well um, so I think it all comes down to the fight and the fight needs to be a world title at yeah. world level and then that arena is brought to to the stage and obviously that is as South Africans that's what we want and yes it's difficult we on the end of the world we're right at the bottom we've got to travel very far for those opportunities but when South Africans are given those opportunities at the right time in their career, we've seen it time and time again, they are capable of doing it. So South Africans have always been able to compete at world level. And to me, Dumaswini is world level and people will see it on the 28th of April. Uh, when you win the title, because I, I, I hate yes. saying if, because when, you, when you're talking to someone, you don't want to say if you win, you want to say when you win the world title, is the plan to defend the silver title again and then maybe challenge for world title straight away or take it a bit longer? So, on overruling there, Dumaswini on his side, but as the <laughs> manager of him, we need to see the options. He could be introduced into the top five of the WBC. There could be an opportunity to fight the WBC champion. He could open up, the title could open up doors for us in other organizations. So we've got to see the opportunities. We've got to chat to our promoter, Yano Matiti. We've got to see his vision. I'm sure he's, he's already got something in mind. We are working on the next step already, which we can't discuss at this time. We will... We'll get an exclusive on said Boxing Talk. We'll get a, you, you guys will get an exclusive. <laughs> <Okay>. So... <laughs> The main thing right now is let's capture the title, let's secure our position in the world, let's boost him up there. Dumas when he went from like 98 in the world to number 16 now, just after the Laura fight. He's now fighting number 10, he could introduce himself to number 8 in the world on box rec. You can't not recognize the guy and not fill him into your ratings in all the organizations. So. There could be an opportunity to, to defend this. We could land up fighting the WBC world champion. We could land up fighting the IBF world champion. What awaits us, we don't know. We could land up fighting on the Monday after the fight. We could get an offer to fight the boy from the UK, Thailand, the Philippinian. Anything can happen. Um, there could be questions asked if Dumaswini takes care of jo Sultan in, in, in style on the 28th. He could stop him, could beat him on points. If we stop him, maybe guys get a little bit nervous. There's a lot of activity in the division at the moment. Estrada is fighting the WBC champion again in a rematch. Um, that's an interesting fight to see. The, the, the boy from Thailand, the WBC champion, is very strong. He's a, he's a big, big puncher, solid boxer. We've seen him take care of Chocolito. He's taking care of Estrada. He's fighting Estrada again in a rematch. It is a mega fight. That is the, the, the golden boy in the division, the WBC champion. We also got to ask ourselves, why hasn't any of the other champions unified with him? Yeah. So 
He is a credible world champion. Is he able to stay at the division? I'm not sure. Is he going to be around in the division for a lot longer? I'm not sure. He's aging a bit. There's been some questionable fights in his career. He's had some great world title defenses and he's had some not so solid performances in his, um, in his career as well. So this is boxing. Styles make fights. When the opportunity comes, do you take it or don't you take it? When you're fighting for the WBC world title, of course you take it. Because there's only ever been two South Africans to fight for the WBC world title. Why not try and add a third? So, yeah, I think let's see what the, 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 the kind of doors that open after this fight. There are, I mean, you still got to get through the fight, you know, but uh, how excited are you for, like, I mean, obviously there's plans in the future for you. I mean, there's, there's, there's a, when it comes to like, world titles, there's television, there's big things that are coming. Do you have to, like, calm yourself down sometimes when you think about these things in the future? Yeah, when, when the television comes and stuff, eh, me, I, I didn't used to get the interviews and stuff and stuff. I'm a bit shy to talk in the in the TV, to talk in the interviews. Yeah, I'm that person who doesn't like to talk. Who just if if you told me about boxing, let's fight. Yeah, I can fight. Yeah, not to talk too much. I I I'm not that person who, who talk. Yeah. Who knows how to talk and yeah, all those things. I'm not that person. I think his actions speak louder than his like words. Really tacky, I mean, that's that's he doesn't he doesn't talk much either. He just does. Yeah. He, well, in his heyday, he used to like just bang guys out and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. And then just lastly, uh, just a shout out to all the people that are going to come and watch your fights, and uh, anyone you want to send a message to. Yeah, I would like to to say to to my fans, they 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 have to come uh, in the Orient Theatre to, sh to see my fight because I'm fighting the big fight. I need the support. I need to see the wall pegged in that day so that I can feel myself when I'm going out to the ante room to see my fans that the, the hall is pegged. I'll do more. And I love to, thanks, uh, to thank uh, my sponsor, Evan Art. I like to thank uh, my team, Durant's, Durant's team, that's all. Cool. Thank you for joining me. Thank you to the our promoter, Yana Matiti. He's given us the SA title, we won it. He's given us the IBO International title, we won it. We're now fighting for the WBC Silver title. Thank you for having our backs. You've believed in us and we will continue to produce.